it is Tyler here once again from the Character Workshop, where even the fan bases that you don't expect to have a bad side, have a bad side. And today I'm going to be talking about what I would personally consider to be one of the worst Doctor Who YouTubers that I've seen as of right now. Now, fun facts, I have been planning at some points in a came from England, you know, maybe not this season, but maybe like, you know, at some point in the future. I wanted to do like an episode where I specifically talked about like Doctor Who YouTubers, or WhoTubers as I would often call them. Kind of similar to the Thomas YouTubers episode I did a long time ago, back in Season 2. But, yeah, I decided to hold off that for a while because, boy, do I want to do a video talking about this guy. And this particular YouTuber that I'm talking about today is going to be a guy by the name of Ballstrek. But Tyler, I have no idea who Ballstrek is. What does he do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, Ballstrike is a guy who does reviews of a variety of different TV shows and movies that come out recently. And by reviews, I mean just him, like, bitching about the fact that, like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, a woman is a main character, a black person has a main role, an Asian person is blah, 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 blah. Like, how can I describe Ballstrike in a nutshell? Racist, sexist, transphobic, homophobic, any kind of phobic you can think of. And like I said, it's not just Doctor Who. He does, like, you know, a variety of videos, you know, criticizing stuff like Star Wars, Star Trek, DC superhero movies, Marvel superhero movies. He he criticizes anything that, like, you know, has any sort of diversity in it whatsoever. Even if, like, whatever he's criticizing is well-written. And today I'm going to be taking a look at his review from, you know, almost two years ago about Fugitive of the to -Dune. And I've never seen this video before, but I can already tell you. It's probably going to be like any other video he does, just whining and bitching about, you know, somebody that's different from him having a main role in his media that he watches. But anyways, let's stop talking and let's start watching. Alright, hello guys, here I am. Um, do apologize for the lower audio quality, but then again, this is like not the first video uh, of A Cape of England I've done in this style. But anyways, here we go. We're going to watch Bullstrike's video from... Almost two years ago, Chibs Breaks Doctor Who, Fugitive of the Jadoon Review and Rants. Okay, first of all, I really like that uh, photo of Jodie Whittaker at the opening. But anyways, let us see what kind of stuff he'll, um, he'll uh, bitch about and cry about this time. Well, this week, Chibs the Idiot doubled down again to ensure that his woke demands were met. And, well, the demands of the BBC. And it should also be noted that this episode was written by Vinay Patel, the same hack that wrote last year's race-baiting Demons of the Poon job. Oh, what? Okay, first of all, <laughs> I don't know if he pronounced, like, is it pronounced Poonjab or Punjab? I have no idea, but, like, honestly... While I'm not the biggest fan of, like, the, the Whitaker era of Doctor Who, I do think, you know, Vinay Patel, uh, my opinion, is was probably one of the better writers from that era. Honestly, I kind of liked Demons of the Punjab a little bit. Not an amazing episode, but it was, like, definitely better than, like, the rest of Series 11. And and most of the reason why I'm doing a video, like, reacting to this is because Future of the Jadoon is probably my favorite Whitaker episode as of right now, so... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just wanted to see, because I know... I know there's going to be a point in the video where he's going to complain about something, and I'm not going to say what it is, but, like, spoilers if you haven't seen this episode, but anyways. Capaldi and Dr. Nasty are both part of the doc. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I find it very, like, you know... Bullstrike tends to have a, a tendency to, like, you know, refer to, like, you know, the people who work on the show by, like, you know, very childish, you know, name-calling, like calling Chris Chibnall Chips the Idiot and calling Jodie Whittaker Miss Nasty or whatever, like, Bullstrike has, like, the mentality of, like, a five-year-old who, like, you know, y who gets their toy taken from them or, like, doesn't like the idea of, I don't know, it, you, can, you can see, you know, he has, like, the mind of a child. Other much, much better showrunners and script editors have considered playing with the Doctor's backstory in such a fashion, but ultimately decided not to do it. Because, again, this undermines everything. Andrew Cartnell's... A okay, first of all, I, I want to keep, uh, I, I want to mention something about, like, you know, oh, like, past showrunners didn't do stuff like this. Um, I don't know if Bullstrike knew about this, but after Tom Baker was, you know, done playing the Doctor, you know, after he left the show... Both him and John Nathan Turner, who was the producer at the time, were 
you know, said the said that there was a possibility that, like, you know, oh, the fifth Doctor could be a female. You do realize that the idea of, like, you know, a female Doctor has been, you know, in the works, like, literally since the 80s. And, and the fact that you say, like, oh, Doctor Who's woke nowadays, like... Man, Bullstrek. <laughs> I... Whatever, let's, let's move on. Original master plan went so far as to proclaim that the Doctor was God, but both him and JNT thought it was a bad idea in the end and decided to keep things deliberately vague. Stephen Moffat's favorite activity seems to have been playing with the question of who the Doctor was and is, and made it a point to establish that the only Doctors were the ones we saw on screen, or the first regeneration cycle. The only exception to this was the War Doctor, devised because Christopher Eccleston was unwilling to take part in the 50th anniversary special, but it's clear that this was originally meant to be his doctor. John Hurt's performance was mesmerizing, but I never really thought shoehorning in another regeneration was the best way to solve this problem. I think that part of the story should have been given to Paul McGann, but it wasn't canon destroying. It could still be within the same regeneration cycle. The only thing that changed was that Matt Smith ended up being the final doctor of the original 13 cycle. There is, of course, the possibility that this is another version of the doctor from a mirror universe, and if this were RTD or pre series 9 Moffat, I would be hoping to hell that this was the explanation, and it probably would be, because they both had respect for Doctor Who lore and the show's legacy. But we aren't under either of these brilliant men. Okay, so, <laughs> I know he's, like, you know, just, like, going around the bush in this. Uh, you, you could just clearly say it, Bullstrike. You could just be blatant about it. Oh, you know, I'm so pissed off that the Doctor is now a woman, and now there's a female black Doctor. You, you could have just said that, Bullstrike. You could have just clearly said that, but uh, he, he, he's just hiding the fact that, like, you know, he's both, like, you know, racist and sexist. And now are we? Nope, we're under Chibs the Idiot. So let's address the elephant in the room, the demographics of the casting. If this were RTD or Moffat, we would think it was a strange choice, but would probably say, okay, we'll see where this goes, but you'd better not mess it up. Ten years ago, we would be viewing this very differently, but this isn't 2005 or 2010. It's 2020, and if we look at the evidence at hand, then it's obvious that this casting was done purely for ideological reasons. The BBC's discriminatory diversity and inclusion strategy has been in force for several years now, and it mandates which races and genders can appear on screen and work behind the scenes. Or to put it another way, it openly discourages white males for- Okay, so I don't know if this, this video of his is still up, but uh, speaking of uh, Demons of the Punch app, he did a review of this, and like at the very beginning he mentioned like, uh, he mentioned this whole like conspiracy about like, you know, the BBC doing this whole like, you know, replacement process you know trying to get rid of all the all the white males from like you know television and just in general and replacing them with like you know women or you know people of color and this is like what he's saying right now is like further like you know proving his like you know or not proving like further like you know emphasizing his whole like conspiracy about like you know the bbc and you know other companies you know getting rid of white men which is honestly not true if you've seen you know anything movies or tv shows from being hired at any level it's not much of a stretch to say that this casting was made because of this strategy which would not have been the case 10 or 15 years ago and to be clear i have nothing against this actress she actually gave a better performance as the doctor in 15 minutes than jodie whittaker has done in two series and now that i've said that i'll still be accused of attacking the actress this is the chibs the idiot Dr. Nasty era of Doctor Who. We know why this decision was made. It was done to bait and mock us with impunity thanks to the license fee. It was a middle finger to the many that have denounced this era because of what it stands for. Back in 2017, I warned of what I thought at the time was the worst case scenario for this era of the show formerly known as Doctor Who, now known as shit. How wrong I was. I had no idea of the blind hatred these people would have for this now over 56 year old franchise. Franchise. I couldn't have guessed at the level of hatred they would have for Doctor Who fans. They are not interested in giving us quality TV. They aren't capable of it. So that's not a surprise. They are only interested in appealing to that nasty little demographic that call themselves Doctor Who fans. But all right, first of all, you don't have any like any evidence of like anybody who works on Doctor Who like deliberately trying to like you know cast you know somebody of like you know of this gender or this color and by the way just letting you know uh i'm pretty sure one of the main reasons why chris chimnall casted jody whitaker as the doctor is because you know 
you know, Jodie Whittaker was one of the main characters of, like, you know, one of Chimno's other TV shows, Broadchurch, so I guess he thought she would probably be the best for the Doctor. That's probably, that could be why. I could be wrong, but that's usually why. A lot of times, whenever, like, showrunners would often cast actors as the Doctors, usually they would have worked alongside them, you know, prior to Doctor Who. Like, for example, Russell T. Davis casted Christopher Eccleston to be the first Doctor of Modern Who, because they've worked together in the past. So... Just for that alone, I think your point just kind of like, you know, goes down the toilet. Really are nothing more than brainwashed kids or hateful people looking for attention or people looking to blame everything else for their problems through the use of identity politics. And oh dear, it's been an interesting 24 hours on Twitter. Remember a few years back when some were saying that Generation Z was supposed to be the most conservative generation of the past 100 years. Yeah, it didn't really turn out that way, did it? Now... To be clear, I'm not picking on this entire age group, but I'm going to make some observations on some members of this group. As I said, this group has been brainwashed from birth. They've had parents that only focus on giving them unearned praise. They have school systems that teach them that if you're a straight white male, you are scum, a sexual predator, and a privilege. Citations, dude. I need citations. None of this conspiracy nonsense. You know, I can literally just see Bolstrek, you know, with like a, a tinfoil hat being like, oh, oh, they're getting rid of the white males. They're getting rid of the white males. Oh, God, please don't go for me. Individual, which, when in actuality, is anything but. All this because of the way you were born. This is also the generation that was raised on social media, which has only fueled the narcissism of certain elements of this age demographic. There is a divide in this group. Those at the higher end of the IQ spectrum are able to see the crap for what it is. I've had the pleasure of talking to many of you. In other words, um, boomers, like yourself. <laughs> You. So you do give us some hope. Those at the lower end of the IQ spectrum are the ones that repeat the same things over and over again on Twitter without understanding. And yet here you are repeating the same shit in these videos, like, you know, just criticizing, you know, Doctor Who for like, you know, casting people that are not like straight white people doing this and that what they're actually saying you really don't know what racist and sexist actually means do we and i'm looking at it and i'm like discussing it <laughs> that's you bolstrek you being raised in the age of social media this low iq group is only interested in seeking attention and approval young feminists blame the straight white man for not being able to get ahead in the world well let's look at a few things if you took a useless degree in gender studies because you didn't want to do any actual work then you have nobody to blame but yourselves also because this group has been coddled their entire lives they think the world owes them something it doesn't and if you think you're going to get a high paying corporate job at 22 then you're just deluding yourself, unless you work for the BBC, because talent, ability, and intelligence means nothing over there these days. You just have to tick the right box. It's the males in this group that you kind of have to feel sorry for. And my god, are these early 20-somethings going to get a harsh dose of reality in the near future? Ever noticed why male feminists amongst millennials are disappearing rapidly? I'll let you figure it out but I doubt you'd have the brain power. There is also some hilarity in the hypocrisy- Speaking of people who don't have brain power- <coughs> of some of these people. For instance, there are a few white males between the ages of 22 to 25 whose profiles say they work in TV. Of course, I will not give their names. If it's the BBC, then I can assume mommy or daddy knew someone because that's the only way a straight white male would ever get hired over there these days. Some of these kids, sorry, but I refuse to call them men, have organized more than one hilarious- Damn, Jesus. <laughs> He's just like, wow, all right. Um, I don't think I have anything to say about that, just ouch. <laughs> over the top attacks on my Twitter account. Their lack of self-awareness is hilarious, but not unsurprising. They bang on about diversity and equity hiring being a good thing. And if you don't support it, you are a sexist and a racist. All this does is expose your fake altruism. If you believe in this, then why don't you step aside because you're taking a job from a quote marginalized group? Oh wait, never mind, you're special, because you've been told this your entire life. I see, so it's others that must step aside. But you're above everyone else, so the rules you would have imposed on others don't apply to you. Pathetic, really. If you don't want to be the change you want to see, then kindly do everyone a favor and shut the fuck up. Why did I bring this into an episode review of Doctor Who? Or the show- 
And you know what's funny about this? Despite the fact that this is called like a Fugitive of the Doom review, you barely talked about the story or anything going on in the episode. You're just, you know, criticizing the casting, criticizing your your so-called like, you know, woke agenda that Doctor Who is doing, you know? You barely even talked about like, you know, the stuff that happened in the story, like, you know, this happening, this happening, like you barely talked about the actual story. It's just the casting and like, you know, the stuff behind the scenes that you're criticizing about. You're not even talking about the stuff that's going on in the episode. That's what a review should be about. It shouldn't be, you know, about, you know, stuff behind the scenes. It shouldn't be about, like, the people working on the show, the people on the show. It, it should just be about the episode. Like, you're you're not, like, hitting the points there, you know. It is it is more of a rant than a review. Like, you know, you've only gotten, like, you know, half of what this video is titled. So, formerly known as Doctor Who, now known as shit. Because what Chibs, the idiot, did this week finally broke the fandom. And now we have reached a point of no return. Again, I bear no ill will towards the actress. She did a fine job, and I couldn't help but smile a bit when she made fun of Dr. Nasty. It's the motivations, which are clear after the last few years, behind this choice that broke the fandom. You are not allowed to criticize it without being called all the favorite SJW buzzwords. And Doctor Who fandom is now disproportionately represented by these nasty little shits. And some older people who clearly have issues or are trying to hide something. One thing that I want to reinforce... And you're definitely one of those older people that are like, you know, trying to... You're, you're you're basically trying to like you know hide your you know your racist you know white supremacy ideas and you know everything that I've said you were at the beginning of the video you know I've mentioned that like you know you're sexist you're racist you're transphobic you're homophobic you know you're pretty much everything that like you know I think most people nowadays would like just you know hate you for and you know I'm I'm legit surprised that this guy has not been you know canceled yet I'll, I'll be very honest is that not all people that like this era are reprehensible. There are many civilized people, many of whom I've interacted with, that do like this era. They are respectful, and we can agree to disagree. And it... Okay, now that part's very surprising. I'm surprised he's mentioned, like, you know, the fact that there were, like, people that, like, you know, who, who disagree with him that he actually, you know, is not, you know, pissed off at. That's very surprising, judging from somebody who, like, you know, constantly makes fun of, you know, the Doctor Who fans who generally enjoy the Whitaker era doesn't degenerate into name calling and accusations there is nothing wrong with like and yet you name called freaking uh, what, what's his name chris chimnall and jody whittaker liking something that's objectively bad being a massive b horror movie fan i can understand this all too well unfortunately these people amongst 13th doctor fans are in the slim minority up until two years ago doctor who fandom was a great thing to be a part of those days are over this regime and those okay personally i i personally still think the doctor who fandom you know like you besides you you know besides you know the toxic filth that you're a part of um, I think Doctor Who generally has a pretty good fandom. It has a better fandom than, like, most fandoms on the internet. Like, take a look at, like, you know, the, the Brony fandom. Five Nights at Freddy's, Friday Night Funkin', Among Us, Thomas the Tank Engine. Hell, even freaking, like, you know, Doctor Who has a better fan base than, like, both Star Trek and especially Star Wars. Like, I don't know what you're talking about there, Bullstrek, you know. Anyway. Those that dare to call themselves Doctor Who fans have ruined it. It was once a great show, but it's over now, and I don't see it ever coming back. And that. All right, just another statement to you know bring up with there. You you, you don't realize that like you know Doctor Who is like a constantly changing show. You know the Doctor changes every couple of years. The showrunners change. The writing staff changes. The directors change. The intros change. The 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 guy who composes the music changes. It's a show kind of all about change. Oh, and also the companions change. You know, different companions every now and then. Like, you don't realize, you know, one of the main points of Doctor Who, and also, like, what kind of makes Doctor Who one of the most unique TV shows out there, is that it constantly changes, you know, every couple years. That's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe, and check your subscription and notification status, because YouTube is being shady on these things lately. And follow me on Twitter. And as always, everyone, thank you for watching, and have a great day. And I will not do any of that stuff, Bullstrek. Thank you. <laughs> well, anyway, that was that was my uh, little uh, little video about Bullstrek. Um, I didn't have too much to say, but you know, a lot of stuff I did have to say, I did spend a good amount of time talking about. But yeah, Bullstrek. Um, 
It's one of those situations where, like, if you don't like something, just don't watch it. I don't know why Bolstret just bothers, you know, still watching Doctor Who, even though he clearly hates what's going on in the show right now. But I think the main reason he's doing it just for views and for, for attention, you know, just to, like, you know, further, you know, emphasize his, you know, his ideas and his ideology about, like, you know, oh, you know, straight white people should be, like, the majority when it comes to, like, you know, movies and TV shows. I don't know. It's stupid. And, and you probably wonder, like, oh, why, why is why is his username like Bolstrek formally? Well, apparently he did a video uh, about you know Russell T Davis being the new showrunner, and it got a lot of you know negative feedback from people because you know he thinks you know oh Russell's still gonna you know make the show woke just like Trip Chibnall did, and it caused him to have a pretty mental breakdown on Twitter from what I've heard. And nowadays he's still he's called Bolstrek formally, even though for some reason when I go to his YouTube channel. He is still posting videos. Like he, uh, eight days ago, he did a review of uh, Once Upon Time, or probably just an episode, like you know, of him just criticizing, you know, the casting and whatnot, not just you know the quality of the episode itself. But yeah, he's still pretty active despite like you know, almost being canceled with that uh, Russell T. Davis video, which is right over here. But yeah, Bolstrek. Uh, I don't know what else to say about him. You know, just I don't know. Stay away from him. I guess you know he's not he's not worth. Um, you know, getting upset about, like, he'll, he'll eventually, you know, have a downfall at some points, you know, I don't think he's gonna, like, you know, keep going, you know, with his, you know, with this content forever, I think there's gonna be a point in time where, you know, all the stuff that he's saying is just gonna, like, you know, bite him in the ass, but with that being said, that's about it for this, um, video, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, um, if you did, give it a like, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more episodes of A Cave From England, or just mediocre plush content in general, leave a comment down below, let me know what you think, that's about it. This is Tyler from the Character Workshop, signing out. And I did say in the last episode that this episode was going to be the David Tennant Christmas specials ranked, but I decided to change that because, you know, I know it's December 1st, but it's like, you know, still quite a long way till Christmas, so I'm going to hold off on the David Tennant um, video until next episode, which will be closer to Christmas. So next episode for sure will be me ranking all of the David Tennant Christmas specials from Doctor Who. So see everybody later. Fuck, fuck, fuck up. Man, these guys, dude. You're fucking dead, son. I don't give a fuck, man. I got eight my fucking life at this point. Welcome to Bam World.